Solving linear systems by graphing. Our first question here says state the solutions for each of the following linear systems. Now a solution is a point of intersection between two lines. So when it asks us to state the solution for each of the following linear systems, it's asking us to determine where the two points intersect or where they cross. So if we take a look at our first pair of lines, they intersect at this point right here. And this point is at negative 1 on the x-axis and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 on the y-axis. So the solution for this particular set of linear systems is the point negative 1 and 6 because that's where they intersect. If I take a look at the next set of lines, I see that the two lines do not cross. And it looks to me as though they're parallel, which means if I kept drawing them further off the page, they wouldn't cross eventually. They're just going to stay evenly spaced. So if they have no point of intersection, we say that they have no solution. Now our last set of lines here are a little misleading. It actually only looks like there is one single line there. And the reason that we can only see one line is that both lines are in the exact same spot. So if both lines are in the exact same spot, they actually intersect at every single point along that line. So rather than list every single point along that line, we say that there are infinite solutions. Right? Infinity is the largest number we can have. So an infinite number of solutions means that there are millions upon millions upon millions of points where these two lines cross. So one of the methods we're going to look at in this unit is solving by graphing. So it says solve the following system of equations by graphing. So you'll notice that we're given two lines. The first one is y equals negative x plus 3 and then 5x plus 5y plus 10 equals 0. And what we want to do is graph those two lines and then look to see where they intersect. So I'm going to start with the first line, y equals negative x plus 3. So I like to graph using slope and y-intercept. So in this case, the slope is the number in front of the x, which is really just a negative, but it's secretly a negative 1. And my y-intercept is the number 3. So what I'm going to do is on my graph, I'm going to start with the y-intercept of 3. So on the y-axis, I'm going to find where positive 3 would be and make a point there. And then I use my slope to help me find the additional points on the graph. So this is negative 1. Secretly, this is negative 1 over a denominator of 1. And slope is rise over run, or delta y over delta x. So a negative 1 would mean that we're going to go down 1 square, and the positive 1 on the bottom means we're going to go to the right 1 square. So from here, I'm going to start at my y-intercept and go down 1 to the right 1. And keep doing that, following that pattern of down 1, right 1, down 1, right 1, as far as I can go. And then we like to follow the pattern backwards as well. It's a good idea to try to mark all of your points instead of just using a line of best fit, because otherwise when we go to do our intersection point, we might be a little bit off. So I would use a ruler to connect my points together and draw in my line. And I'm going to label this number one so that I know which line that is. I'm then going to do the second line. So I have 5x plus 5y plus 10 equals 0. Call that number 2. Now this one looks a little different from this one. It's not in the same form. So this one was in what we call slope y-intercept form, which is really good for graphing. And this one here is in standard form, which is not so good for graphing. So what I want to do is isolate y to get that all by itself. So I'm going to start by taking the 5x to the other side by subtracting. 
And I'm also going to take that 10 to the other side by doing the opposite and subtracting. So I get 5y equals negative 5x, take away 10. And then I need to get the y by itself to isolate it, so I'm going to divide everything by the coefficient, which is 5. So 5 divided by 5 is 1y, or we just write y. Negative 5 divided by 5 is negative 1x. And then negative 10 divided by 5 is negative 2. So we have the line y equals negative 1x minus 2. So this one has a slope of negative 1 and a y-intercept of negative 2. Now I do notice that negative 1 and negative 1, that the slopes of these two lines match. And I do remember that if the slopes of the two lines match, that means they are parallel. But we are going to graph it, and then we'll take a look and see what that means. So I'm going to start at my y-intercept of negative 2. So on the y-axis, we start down at negative 2. And then this is really 1 over 1. So we're going to go down 1 to the right 1, down 1 to the right 1, and keep following that pattern all the way. And then follow it backwards as well. Draw your line. Now a good line should always go from one end of the grid to the other. It should have arrows on both ends. And you should use a straight edge to draw it so that it actually looks like a line. So when I take a look, I notice that the two lines do not intersect on my grid. So I have to ask myself, do I think they might intersect further on? And I notice that because they have the same slope, they are definitely two parallel lines, which means they are never going to intersect. So I'm just going to finish off this question by saying that there is no solution. So I use my three little dots for therefore, and then I write no solution. And if you want, we can write that they're parallel. But no solution is really all that's required. And that's solving linear systems by graphing.